Hey guys, so today we are going to make cannoli. Welcome back to Never Tasted Better, where I love to create delicious food and share it with everybody. So at the beginning of this year, back during tax season, my husband and I, we sat down to do our taxes. About 30 minutes into doing our taxes, we both just started to get really burnt out. If you do your own taxes, you will know what I'm talking about. My husband ran out to this new coffee shop that was down the street from us. It's called the Lion's Den. And he brought back two medium hot black coffees, super strong, just the way we like them. Anyways, he came in the door and he had these two perfect looking cannolis in this bag. They looked perfect. Not only did they look perfect, they tasted perfect. The shell shattered in our mouth. It was so rich and creamy, just like a classic cannoli should be. Ever since then, I've been wanting to create my own recipe for cannolis. My goal when it came to making these cannolis was to keep it as classic of a recipe as possible. I wanted a crispy outer shell, a fluffy ricotta cheese filling that wasn't overly sweet, and I was really pleased with the results of this recipe. I'm so excited to show you guys how I make my cannolis. So before we get started, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and let's do this. The first step to making these cannolis is going to be done the night before. Don't worry, it's an easy step. We just need 32 ounces of whole milk ricotta cheese, which we're going to place all of it between two pieces of cheesecloth. We want to get rid of any excess water in that ricotta cheese. If you don't do this step, your cannolis will get soggy from that filling. So make sure you pick up that cheesecloth, strain it tightly, wrap it really tightly with your hands. You can already see droplets of moisture at the bottom. It's just the beginning. Trust me, there's a lot of excess moisture in here we need to get rid of. Place your wrapped ricotta cheese in a strainer and place that strainer over a bowl. Put this in the fridge overnight. Now to make our cannoli shells. We will need two cups all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one eighth teaspoon cinnamon, two tablespoons unsalted butter, two large egg yolks, reserve the egg whites. We will use them later. Half a cup marsala, also one teaspoon of white vinegar. That's our ingredients, let's whip it together. I'm using a food processor to bring this all together. You can do it by hand in a bowl, that's fine. Add your all-purpose flour, your sugar, your salt and cinnamon, plug it in, and we're going to pulse it to combine. Cut in pieces of our unsalted butter, place it all over the flour mixture, and then we will be adding our white vinegar. Next, add in your two large egg yolks, also your marsala. This marsala is going to help the cannoli shells bubble up as they fry. It's very important to the cannoli shell. Blend this together until it resembles a pastry dough. Once it has this dough-like consistency, we're going to take it off and knead it. Lightly flour a clean hard surface and we're going to dump out all of our dough right onto our work area. Start kneading this guy for 8 to 10 minutes. It's a really crumbly dough to begin with, but as you go along it becomes more elastic and smooth. After 10 minutes is up, we're going to shape this guy into a ball. And if you press on the top ever so slightly, it will spring back. That's a great sign. Our dough needs to rest now. So we're going to lightly oil a large clean bowl, swirl it around, get it well coated in the oil, flip it over, and cover this tightly with plastic wrap. Our dough needs a good rest for about two hours. So I put it in a slightly warm spot and left it alone. Our kids have a new playground set. I don't know if I shared this with you guys yet, but they absolutely love it. It comes with a sandbox, they have swings. They love this thing to pieces. I'm so glad we got it for them. They burn a lot of energy on this thing. Our next step is attaching a candy thermometer to a large pot, add plenty of canola oil for frying, and heat this guy up to 350 degrees. 
I am so embarrassed. I forgot to turn on my camera. So I already cut my dough in half and I rolled out the one half. This other half I'm going to focus on for you guys. So we're going to roll it out to a long strip until it's paper thin. We want it as thin as possible. This is going to take a little bit of elbow grease. This dough resembles a pasta dough. It's very stretchy. It requires a lot of patience to work with it. Using a three inch round cookie cutter or whatever you got, we're going to cut out three inch rounds of this dough. Then we're going to pick up a cannoli shell, place it in the center, fold over one half of the cannoli shell, dip your finger in egg whites, brush that egg white onto each side of that extra half that's hanging over, fold it over and make sure you seal it up really well by pinching it together. This sealing process is really important. If you don't seal it correctly, this is what happens. Once you are done cutting out all your rounds, don't waste the dough. Just reshape it into a ball and re-roll it as thin as you can get it. Now that our cannoli shells are ready for frying, our oil is nice and hot, we're going to place in three cannoli shells at a time. Move them around for one minute in the oil until they're a beautiful golden brown color. Then we're going to pick them out of the oil. Make sure you shake off the excess oil. Don't burn yourself, be careful. Place them on a wire rack with paper towels. This is the tricky part, but while they are still hot, wiggle off the cannoli shell using a paper towel. The paper towel helps and does wonders. So let our cannoli shells cool off and we're going to work on our ricotta cheese filling. We will need one and a quarter cup powdered sugar, one teaspoon of maple syrup or pure vanilla extract, also a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and our strained ricotta cheese. This part was so satisfying. I want to show you how much liquid came out of this cheese. Check it out. It's like three quarters of a cup of liquid. That's great. We got it out. So now we have this giant ball of ricotta cheese. It looks like a large dumpling. We're going to add all of our powdered sugar, also our cinnamon and our maple syrup. I used a spatula for this part. I just started breaking it up gradually. I didn't want to be overly harsh with it. I wanted it to be fluffy. Once it's broken up, we can start folding everything together until the mixture is completely blended. Once it is mixed, set it aside, and this part is extra, you don't have to do it. But I have here crushed pistachios and mini chocolate chips for dipping. I filled up a large piping bag with our ricotta cheese mixture and I filled each cannoli to the very, very brim. I love a loaded cannoli. The amount of the ricotta cheese to the cannoli shells was perfect. I used up every single drop of the ricotta cheese and each cannoli was filled properly. I had so much fun dipping the cannoli shells in the chocolate chips and pistachios. You can dip it in whatever you'd like. I heard even dry fruit on the end. Some people like that. So go for it, whatever you prefer. These guys came out so pretty. I don't even want to mess them up by eating them, but of course I'm going to eat them. I mean, I love cannolis. Here's a helpful tip if you want to keep your cannolis crisp. Wrap each one individually in plastic wrap and cover in an airtight container. Store them in the fridge. Is it cannoli? I can't say it yet. Cannoli. <laughs> cannoli. Cannoli. The kids love the special treat. They each ate their own, including Lucy. Let's see how these cannolis are and if they live up to my expectations. Mmm, the shell is so crisp on the outside. The filling is very fluffy. It has that perfect classic cannoli flavor. I'm very satisfied with this recipe. Have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in my next video.